All right. Well, let's get this started. In, let's go. Yep. In three. Oh no, I can't. I forgot to queue up the 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 oh. music. <laughs> Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast, where we talk about our food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. And I'm My Chow. And thank you for joining us. Hope you're doing all right. Hey, My Chow, it's nice to see you. How you doing? I'm okay. You know, just chilling, I guess. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Good. Well, it's interesting. You know, snacks. this. you got snacks. Do you have any uh, follow up on those snacks that you, you, you tried from last, They're last time? They're all good. <laughs> <laughs> They're all good. I'm sure I'm good. The uh, specifically, I really like actually the the different shrimp chips are they're all good. But okay. the sriracha mayo one is probably my favorite one. What is it about? Is it just because of that flavor, the sriracha and the mayo? Yeah, and it doesn't like taste too much like sriracha. It tastes more like just like oh, a spicy kind of mayo. Oh, cool. Well, there you go. Spicy mayo, right? Can't go wrong with that. Spicy mayo shrimp chip. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, glad you tried good. it. Considering that there's a shortage of sriracha these days, so maybe you get oh, the yeah. last little bits. That you enjoy. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll make my own, you know, from yeah. the concentrate. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, I got these harvest snaps right now because was that, why not? Was that part of the the box too? Or yeah. oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And those are pretty good, right? I mean, I've... yeah, they're pretty good. I was a little surprised when I first because I never had it. I don't mm. remember having it for a while, but I was surprised at a little. It really does taste like you know. Edamame. You want to give us a little ASMR? What's going on there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, yeah. I don't know. I got nothing. I, I, I don't know, man. It's, maybe it's we'll not getting picked up? Uh, maybe we'll fix it in post. I have no idea. We'll see. Oh, sure. We'll sure. see when no, this comes out. <laughs> you know, that's good. That means this mic not doesn't pick up unnecessary noise. Great. Maybe. Maybe. But maybe it is necessary. Maybe we'll have to adjust it. I mean, yeah. Uh, just that is get, true. Yeah. But that's cool. I mean, I mean, I'm glad you got to, to try it. And uh, I'm sure, uh, hopefully, uh, Oli got to get some too. <laughs> some. Uh, okay. Ow. Yeah. Okay. Well, not my problem. Yeah, exactly. You're enjoying it now. I also saw you had some uh, something nice to drink. What, what were you having there earlier? Oh, well, it's almost out, but it's from uh, Milk and Tea. Mm. Like, uh, my, it, it's across the street. It's my personal go to boba place from where we live. But mm. I mean, there's like, Five different walkable yeah. mobile places from here. Oh sure, yeah, no shortage in in Little Tokyo, right? Yeah, um, so that's really nice. But yeah. milk and tea is my favorite because a lot of their drinks have default ice cream scoops in them. So, <laughs> oh what? That's yeah, crazy. Okay, it's great. I I as a avid ice cream mer myself, I don't yeah. know. Maybe I should I should try it. That's cool. It, it's always good. I, ice cream makes everything better. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I've been enjoying yeah. more of the the Costco vanilla ice cream. We're talking about oh you know, yes, the giant more. tub or yeah. the two pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still going through that. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'm also having it with like um, uh, like Oreos. And so like I threw oh, okay. Oreos in the freezer, and um, mm -hmm. so it, it becomes like a nice you know cold treat. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And like, uh, like a tiny pizuki kind of thing. Yeah, almost. <laughs> nice. <laughs> almost. Yeah. Um, Speaking so, of ice cream, mm. right now, if you're into it, thrift, uh, Rite Aid's doing a two for eight for thrifties. So, oh really? Yeah. The uh, we just like came the, from Rite Aid. So, we're talking about like half half gallon stuff, or mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. What's your go to, um, you know, thrifty flavor well, there? Honestly, I don't know. I, I like a lot of them. Oli's go to is the uh, Rocky Road, so we got mm -hmm. one of those. And then this time we got chocolate chip cookie dough, which I like in general. Nice. But their their uh, raspberry cheesecake, I'm a big fan of that one. Oh, I bet, I bet, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, cheesecake, come on, yeah, can't fit, can't go wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. You remember so. Patrick? He would always get the uh, often get the uh, was it the cotton candy flavor? Yes, and that, yeah, and I'm and that flavor is still around, right? I mean, like it is. They just had it, yeah. very bright uh, blue very and colorful. pink, yeah. just like in your <laughs> face. You know, you can just taste the diabetes. You know, it's. Uh, <laughs> It was, yeah, it was great. Yeah. Super indulgent. So, yeah, very nice. Yeah. yeah and I, st I still have that uh, ice cream scoop. Okay. So, um, yeah. So do we. And you can't <laughs> use it with the damn thrifties thing. <laughs> the shape is not conducive for the. Um, no. Yeah. 
Oh well. You need that big contain, like the the gallon size containers, for that to work. Yeah, exactly. Well, maybe cool. that maybe that's the marketing game. You know, it's like, oh man, I have this weird shaped ice cream scoop, and uh, now I need a large tub of ice cream to use it with. <laughs> Straight up, yeah. if they made a large tub of Thursday's ice cream, I would buy it. Uh, same here, but I don't know where to store it. I think we'd have to eat it on the spot. I think. <laughs> that's fine. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> nice oh man hey yeah. so i don't know if you saw the news i, I saw this headline today mm. it just talked about um because this is follow-up for the the weaves are terrible people oh as it turns out nerds are terrible people okay gen con like one of the biggest like board game conventions in the country out in the midwest somewhere like mm -hmm. it, it's huge uh they had three hundred thousand dollars worth of cards stolen no kidding I don't know what kind of... I didn't read the article because I was like, oh, yeah, well, it was only a matter of time. But Gen Con, man, that's one of the biggest cons in America. Oh, man. I'm looking here. A Gen Con heist. Uh, over 300K haul. Let's take a look at this. Yeah. Man, what that's is it? Crazy. Magic cards? Yeah, yeah magic, magic cards. Isn't that just like two Black Lotus or something? Or whatever it is? I don't know. Not even one, honestly. <laughs> well, that's too bad. That's really a shame. Yeah, know. that's crazy. It's like good. people can't have nice things. Yeah. Yeah. They, well, I'll just say that maybe generally speaking, people are terrible people. You know? Yeah. They, they, they're pretty much the worst. <laughs> yeah. People suck. <laughs> There's our headline right there. People sleeping. You know, just... yeah. Look, anyone who's worked in the service industry knows, all right. Anyone who drives in LA knows. Any it's just yeah. terrible. Yep. Well, I guess if you have any tips, uh contact the Crime Stoppers of Central Indiana at uh Indiana. There yeah. You know. At uh I'll just say it here, 317-262-8477. So uh I wonder if Jenny was there this year. Oh, uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll have, we'll have to ask. You think she had anything to do with it? I mean... That's why I'm wondering. <laughs> She's in cahoots. Uh, this conspiratorial kind of movement here. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, hopefully... Um, I don't know. Hopefully they find it or... Ugh, shoot, it's crazy. I don't know. I don't know. But... But to put a, a high value on like what is basically a cardboard paper with, yeah. with foil on it. Picture. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and some ink. Yeah. Okay. Well, how are those uh, snappies coming along? <laughs> I'm almost done with the bag. Okay. Makes me sad. That kind of me. Yeah, that is a little sad. So don't, don't take your time. Pace it out. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. <laughs> So good. That's fine. Yes, we do. What are we, what's on the menu today? The menu, yeah. There's quite there's quite a menu here going on today. But I wanted to catch up first. Um, you know, uh, on what you know what what we've been up to lately. Um, mm -hmm. just mentioned that you know I had a uh, brunch with uh, John and Carmen and some of our other friends mm -hmm. here at uh, down in Long Beach. Uh, the oh, restaurant the exchange. At the exchange, yes. Uh, large, basically shopping complex of various uh, stores and restaurants, and there is a particular restaurant there called Remix, which is um, I found this is like kind of a brunch, kind of American take on some Filipino fusion. food. Sure, fusion. Why not? It sounds familiar. Like it's shown up on my feed. Oh, really? Does okay. it have like ube pancakes? Yeah, it's in. Well, I don't think it's ube pancakes. It's like um, it's like French toast, but topped with like ube something in there yes mm -hmm. yeah yeah it, yeah I again shown up on my instagram before and you lean into the ube right i mean it, oh that's well, filipino yeah. sure it's a purple put a purple thing on there call it ube and it's filipino <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> that's all it takes to get filipinos out there yeah so uh definitely but you know we had brunch there it was a, it's a pretty good spot you know um again it's not um it it is Filipino, you know, some flavors and dishes, but you know, kind of a more modern take, and I think honestly, like kind of a uh, a menu that might be more accessible to the American palate. Let's say, okay, you know, I would, oh. I think I'd still rather go to a 
just a straight up Filipino restaurant, you know, maybe even okay. like a fast food point point joint and for okay. breakfast, get some, you know, uh, some sea log, you know, breakfast kind of things on there. Mm-hmm. Um, but this was great. Don't get me wrong. Like it was a good ambient, uh, uh, you know, good vibe, good ambiance, and, you know, uh, drinks were on point as well. So, oh, wow. um, yeah, it's just a nice, charming place. Um, so, but then after, okay. of course there's an after, uh, <laughs> well, hold on just before I got to at least correct myself. Yeah. That's not the place I was thinking of. Mm. It was called Lola's by MFK in Anaheim. Well, we, uh, we had, uh. I visited that place with uh, Jamie and and Cat. Mm, that's the place. Okay. Yeah, uh, and actually, it kind of relates to uh, where I'm alluding to next. Because, but not that we went to Lola's, but um, uh, f- we we visited uh, uh, down in whatever the OC. Went down to the Bangkok mm-hmm. lady, and we had talked about um, that place too in in a previous episode with Jamie uh, and Cat. Yes. So on from that it. We, with them, we had gone to Lola's and then we went to Bangkok Lady. Mm. Um, so uh, that's where the connection is. But yes, uh, Lola's has, they definitely have Ube. They also lean into the Ube. So uh, mm. it's definitely in there. And that's a solid mm-hmm. place too. I think we definitely enjoyed what uh, what we had down there. Uh, we'll okay. share, yeah, we'll share the uh, the episode and remind people where they can watch that. Um, but yeah, we, so we, was, we revisited. This was your uh, bang bang? Yeah. Basically, you know. Dang. Yeah. See, I'm getting people. I'm like a bad influence. Getting people. Let's just rope them, rope them in there. <laughs> hey, man. This is part of John's training arc. <laughs> That's right. From from pony to uh, equestrian. I don't know. Whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure. Why not? Um, but ba- uh, Bangkok Lady was just as great as um, the first time I tried it. And we had a lot of the Bangkok. The Bangkok, again, are like these small little uh, savory pancakes made with like a, a batter of rice flour and a coconut cream and th- things like that. And they're made in these like little, um, literally this Able Skeeper fans. You know, if you ever went to Solvang and you have those like those desserts, they're little round kind of fried donut like balls. Those are called Able Skeevers. Um, just think of just a round. Sounds great. Fried ball. Yeah, it's great. But the pan that they use is kind of rounded, mm-hmm. you know, almost, I wouldn't say muffin tin because it is rounded, like um, half spherical thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where they cook the um, the bangkok. And then they fill that with, you know, kind of like a coconut cream thing with uh, minced meat and things like shrimp, pork and vegetable. So you got a little bit of sweetness. It's definitely more savory, but a little bit of sweetness okay. in there. And, and they're just like, they're like this size, you know, maybe... A and mm-hmm. a couple inches or something um and they're but they are bite-sized i mean you could easily so you you know you the smallest set they'll sell is like in a set of like five for like one person but you could easily get like a oh, box wow. of 30 plus maybe up to 50 or 80 or something oh like wow that. yeah because they're easy to, <laughs> to get yeah. through <laughs> um but we also angelo sized order oh absolutely yeah that's a serving for one angelo mm-hmm. and um they also uh have uh, egg rolls too um which are the, i would say it's like uh well they're filled I, me- I remember they have these pieces of shrimp in there like ba- like large uh full pieces of shrimp and similar to like the fillings of a bangkok but like in a in a fried egg roll wrapper so really can't go wrong with that that's so good so good yeah it sounds like it but it's it's too bad i mean i want to say it's too bad but like um because we have already eaten um you know uh, mm-hmm. from earlier you know we already had there was already space taken up you know so they they weren't able to have as much or maybe enjoy mm-hmm. it as much maybe they had a lot but they weren't able to enjoy it because they <laughs> were so full already <laughs> oh no again uh, trading arc time yeah. mm-hmm. but um was it was it just John and Carmen, or you said other friends? Well, remember, you bring them I, all along for the ride. I guess I can't say other friends. That's that's not a qualifier we use anymore. These are just these are just friends. These are friends. Mm, yeah, yeah, real friends. Yes. Well, no, no, it, it, they're just friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, it's Training all good. Everybody, all, all in good company. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, maybe. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think 
it, I don't remember if I said it here or somewhere else, but yeah, one of them, one of them mentioned, it's like, yeah, whenever I hang out with you, it's like, it hurts. <laughs> <Something like that. laughs> that pretty much sums it up, you know? Oh uh, man. But, um, aside from that, let me see some other places I'd hit up, uh, include, there was one day it was out in, uh, kind of North Hollywood area. Um, I, I, what was I, I forgot what I was doing out there, but it was, uh, had to have food involved in there, but I visited mm-hmm. a, a spot called bread and breakfast out in North Hollywood. They serve out breakfast burritos out there, um, okay, which was, good. was pretty solid. And, you know, I had a, I think, uh, like an OG kind of thing with, uh, you know, eggs, bacon, um, cheese and, and potato in there. It was an interesting take though. I will say all the, the burrito, the burrito overall was pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure what your thoughts are there. They had used American cheese in the burrito instead of like, you know, like a cheddar cheese, for example. Um, okay. so, you know, it was very melty, you know, like mm-hmm. super melty, like for an American cheese and a little sticky. <laughs> Let's put it oh. that way. You know, that sounds great. I, I love American cheese. Okay. Yeah. No, American cheese is a great cheese. Don't get me wrong. It's just, uh, mm-hmm. I had, I don't think I'd ever considered it applied in this application. So mm-hmm. it was a different take for sure, but, um, still enjoyable overall. They set up, um, uh, next to a, uh, a liquor store. Um, it's kind of an iconic, uh, landmark in North Hollywood. It's like a, you know, it has a big clown there in the corner. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's a, I forgot what it's called, what All the right, liquor store is up. called. I need uh, to see this. I don't know. Let me see. What if I type in clown liquor store? <laughs> and let's see uh, what this brings up. Um, it just says the clown of North Hall. Yeah, Circus Liquor. Yeah, that makes sense. Circus Liquor okay. is, uh, oh, is the okay. name of the place. Um, let me see if we can bring up a little view of uh, what we're looking at. Boom. Got you right here. There it is. <laughs> oh, I know where that is. There you go. Yeah, very iconic, right? It's uh, mm-hmm, once mm-hmm. once you see it, it's like you know it. You know it when you see it. Yeah, yeah. So um, so they set up just like right next, like right here. Mm. You know, oh, right wow. next to them. So um, there have been a few places that have come and gone out there, but um, yeah, bread and breakfast is the name name of the spot there. Um, mm-hmm. and then later after that, um, I had I drove down not too far down to studio city um to a spot i had been wanting to try for a long time even during their pop-up days these are one of this is one of the few places where i don't think i ever got no did i uh i think i actually did try them once um maybe at a food festival or something but never mm-hmm. like during their own pop-up kind of deal mm-hmm. and this is a place called uh avi q and um it's uh i'd say it's barbecue adjacent um you know, it's okay. not it's not like the uh, barbecue spots that you know we're used to talking about, but it is smoked meat, so don't get me wrong there. Okay. It's shawarma, um, but more oh. more so wagyu shawarma, so higher quality kind of meat, more fat content. You know, just a richer mm-hmm. kind of uh, preparation overall. But Avi Q was definitely uh, is out there. So I think in stu- in Studio City they are they've kind of taken over a a location over there i don't know if it's a permanent deal or something they're still um trying out i don't i don't really know but they're there so they have a physical location um i think they're almost open almost every day um for relatively limited hours definitely open during the lunch lunch time so you can definitely grab it then um Mm -hmm. i know i have something i wanted to share there i think it's i think it's this yeah this is the yeah this is the waggy shawarma um sandwich and so kind of in this pita you know bread it's kind of stuffed there with the you can see the shredded beef the shawarma Mm -hmm. you know packed with uh tomato and veggie and uh and then sauced up a little bit a little bit of tahini and this kind of mustardy sauce it's it's i mean it's um this is very good i mean like just the flavor of the beef is so it's definitely richer uh it's definitely more intense um but you know the sauces like the tahini and so forth that you know really kind of pairs it down kind of brings a nice refreshing uh taste to it as well um yeah it's it's great i mean and i had just got i gotten there just right before they opened so thankfully i 
I got to beat the the crowd, I guess, that was coming in shortly what after. Time did they open? I think noon. I want to say. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, that was your second spot, so that means you went really early to the other place, huh? Yeah. Again, it was like a uh, yeah breakfast burrito. So that's yeah. Up. So that's uh, Avi Q, and uh, so that I, I was glad. I I remember, like I said, I tried them before at yeah food festival or something, and. It was good then, um, and it's just as great now. But I just, but aside from that, I hadn't been able to to visit them otherwise. So I'm glad they have this spot. So it's kind of a reliable, you know, location that you know you can go to. So it's uh, mm-hmm. it's quite nice. But yes, that's um, the food aside. We are still talking about more food. So <laughs> you know, okay, yeah, food aside, <laughs> I guess. We are continuing to talk again about more food adventures and local spots and things like that and good food and good people. You know, my chow, well, it's uh I'm local. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this time it depends on on who's local where. Um Yeah. To our uh what is it, dedicated listeners out in that area. We appreciate you. Sure, why not? We'll find out if we get any takers out there. <laughs> we we haven't even shared what, what we're talking about. Um just this uh, past week, uh, I had the uh, I had the chance to um, do a little traveling and and a little relaxing and a lot of eating. Um, mm-hmm. So normal. A, well, yes. <laughs> normal weekend for you. <laughs> yeah, we call that uh, just a, a typical typical dumb and hungry a day that weekend. ends with Y. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um. But we spent some of that activity in a different part of uh, of the country. Uh, traveled out to um, New Orleans, the great city, the Big Easy. Hey, hey. And I, I guess uh, I guess the doggo agrees. It's pretty excited, as am I. So, well. um, so yes, out in in New Orleans, and uh, let me clarify that it's pronounced New Orleans as opposed to New Orleans or. Nolens or any variation of such. So New Orleans. That'll sound right to me. <laughs> no, I've never been, so why can I say who knows? What do I know? Uh we spent a um better part of a weekend over there. So um, you know, a good Saturday, Sunday, and some of uh the Monday in there. Um <laughs> and even in that show <laughs> really enjoying those Harvest snaps. It seems. I'm glad, Look, man. It's good. It is good, and I'm not. St- I'm not telling you otherwise. I'm just glad you're I really enjoying it and really there. get into it and sharing that with us too. So thank you. <laughs> well, well, we I need. Have no to, shit. Maybe we need to get another setup. I need to set up another mic uh, with you, just that will that will capture more of the nice <laughs> ASMR, you know, details of there as you enjoy that, you know. Yeah, sure. Nice. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you have your regular mic for talking and then we have another mic, you know, just for, you know, the snacks and all those things. Yeah. All right. Let's get let's get on it. Production value through the roof. <laughs> we, we're only going to improve, I hope so. Um, I mean, can we get any lower? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's find out. Back to back to NOLA here um, in New Orleans, you know. People, you know, you, when you hear of New Orleans, you think of things like the French Quarter, Bourbon Street, uh, live music, um, cemeteries, voodoo, and, you know, the yeah. Mississippi oh, yeah. River, uh, and many, many, many more things. Um, you also consider now, or at least I do, on how hot and humid it is over there, because it was <laughs> certainly <laughs> intense. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh you gotta know where to find the shade and what side of the street to walk on so you can get oh, the, get the right amount of coverage because there are mm-hmm. but there are some stretches where you know you just gotta bear it and deal with it because it Dang. isn't done. Bring a lot of sunscreen, bring bring a bring something to to wipe with, you know, um wipe off the sweat and, and all that. And bring uh very breathable clothing. Not 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 just like cottony things like this, because this will just soak up super easy. Mm. Talking about okay. like, uh, yeah, just a nice breathable kind of material out there. Uh, but you don't want to hear about that. You want to, We want to hear about more about the food. Of course, it was filled with uh, a lot of places to eat. Um, 
uh, and that's what I wanted to focus on. And I think there's so much to talk about that we're going to just kind of uh, have to spend another time to talk about more of these places, but we'll get through what we can right now. <laughs> um, okay. But uh, let's just go right into it and talk about uh, one of the first places that uh, I visited when, um, when I got there. So to start my day, um, mm -hmm. I decided to uh, walk from where I was staying over to the French Quarter. I'll bring up a, a map here for those watching along, but hopefully for those listening, you can kind of appreciate what we're talking about here. But um, this is kind of what I'm showing here is the French Quarter, more or less. Um, and you can see it's there just banking along the Mississippi River. And you can see a good mm -hmm. part of that, depending on what part of the... Um, the quarter you're you're walking on but from where i was staying uh you walk towards decatur street and as you walk along east you will find yourself in kind of the french market area um where one of our first stops lies which is cafe du monde and um cafe du monde is a historical place it is a iconic institution um and they've been in uh, this French market area, the French market being just kind of a collection of different types of shops and, and things like that. Um, but been there apparently since 1862. So been there a long Ooh. time. Yeah. So yeah. they, they don't mess around. Okay. And apparently, I don't know if it's always been this way, but they are a 24 seven operation. So closed nice. only during like Christmas and some other day, but, uh, they are going to be open for you, but what the heck that is, is it? For those who don't know, um, Cafe Du Monde serves um, one of, I don't know, one of uh, society's mm. greatest comforts. <laughs> the <laughs> society? Yeah, the world, you know, the uh, is uh, beignets, all right? And beignets are basically fried donuts. What? Uh, I mean, you Well, know, I mean, all donuts are fried, aren't they? Well, are they, though? You can have... Uh, a baked donut? How dare you? <laughs> well, we wanted to clarify that it is in fact fried, um, mm -hmm. and not any other sort of preparation. So, but these are don't these are basically donuts without the holes, um, and they're prepared in these little kind of squared, uh, kind of squared shapes. Mm -hmm. Let me bring that, something up for you here. I definitely took a good amount of pictures. I know you mentioned earlier. It's like I uh, spent the whole you know spent the whole time there, and I I had at this time I hadn't shared anything mm -hmm. on socials. You know, no Not stories. A single story. No I, was like, <laughs> I thought you died. Honestly, like that's so unlike you. Well, I was I was close to the, I was pretty much in heaven at this point. I'll tell you that right now. You know, <laughs> Not really. Wow. Well, I. Uh, well, I don't know. The temperature told me otherwise, but uh, <laughs> as far as the food goes, it's certainly, uh, yes, certainly, it's a bad place. certainly up there. Um, but yes, uh, beignets are definitely a staple of uh, New Orleans and um, that and you know uh, that region's cuisine, cultural cuisine. Um, fried donut squares and. Uh, the, the donut themselves, the beignet themselves, is not particularly sweet. It's kind of mild, um, but it is topped with powdered sugar, mountains of powdered sugar, yeah. to be honest, <laughs> as you can even see here. Um, you, it's, but, you know, by eating them, even taking that first bite, even like smelling them, touching them even an inch, it's like you're never not doing cocaine. Let's put it that way. <laughs> it's like you're... <laughs> It's always, you're always in this kind of weird, you know, position where it looks like you've just took a line and then you're just, <laughs> but, uh, it's all, we're never going to get monetized. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in good fun though. Uh, but yes, but you can uh, see that's what here. Okay it is, yes. Yeah. So I don't know if I have any pictures. Let me see if I have any pictures of the exterior. Um, so this is out in the French market. This is just one of the parts and this is kind of an outdoor space. Um, so a lot of outdoor seating. There is some indoor seating as well, but, um, I think people enjoy mostly when they're outside and, um, 
So you can even see that they've got music set up there, even as early as like whenever I was there, like eight o'clock or something like that. Oh wow! They already had a band going out and setting up and um nice. and playing music. So it it was a great experience. So I think the what it involves is if you're going to dine in and kind of stay there, all you need to do honestly is just sit down, and then someone will come up to you and take your order. So um, it's as really as simple as that. So That's cool. yeah, because I had done. I'll see the awkward things like I just go up to what I thought was like the counter or the register. It's like, I would like, and I just started mouthing off my order. And then she's just, and then the lady's like, you know, what are you, are you just dining in? Are you taking out? It's like, I said, dining in. It's like, oh yeah, just have a seat. <laughs> just, well, I mean, if you don't know, you don't know, right? No, I don't. But obviously I'm, I'm sure she gets that a lot. Yeah, absolutely. But she knows I'm a, I'm definitely not from here. So or yeah, from there, instantly. Rather. Yeah. A tourist. <laughs> yeah. But uh, just sit down and you know, there, there are, um, the the people they're, they're dressed they got this uniform you know white you know shirt and uh with the hat or whatever i don't know um and the, and a lot of them are just kind of sitting around they got they're sitting around some of the tables or on the side because they're kind of waiting for the customers to mm-hmm. you know you know for it to come in so they can take their order or to serve their food or to bust their tables when they're done so they're just kind of on standby um so just sit down and someone will come to you don't worry about it um nice. The beignets themselves, you know, are are very fluffy. You know, there there is a density to them, um, um, because I think as far as how it's prepared, there's just a single rise of the dough. Um, it's not necessarily laminated. It's a very fluffy, you know, uh, dough. Um, but so there's kind of a chewiness to them, which is nice. But and but it is still very like when it puffs up, you see a lot of nice air pockets and, um, mm. you know, in in the beignet. But it is best enjoyed hot. So for a guy, of course, that's taking a lot of pictures, you better just take some pictures and then get on with it because uh, <laughs> that's you got to enjoy it while it's hot. Um, but um, along with your beignets, you want to it's, it would be nice if you would order a cafe au lait. I just butchered that uh, name. Let me try that again. I think it's cafe. Oh, yeah, yeah. I want to say cafe au lait. I think it's more more precise pronunciation. But, I don't know, um, but the cafe au lait is a coffee drink, um, but it is, it accompanies with cream. Um, and the coffee itself is, um, I would say sweetened to an extent. Um, it's mm. filled, but it's not, nec- it's not really a sweet thing per se, but it does add a little bit, but it, um, it's more of a woody kind of, um, cause it's an herb, uh, comes from trees and stuff. So it's more of an herb and, uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> it's an herb that comes from trees and stuff, you know. Like you know, you know nature is we, we don't know much about this like, particular, you know. Well, we don't know much about anything, but <laughs> that's why this is uh the dumb and hungry podcast. Fair so enough. but um it's uh what did I say? Did I even say what it is? It's chicory. Yeah, chicory, yeah. Oh, you did not say that, yes. Okay, so um chicory is the ingredient uh that that mm-hmm. makes it uh you know characteristically this drink so um uh the cream certainly gives it a more mild flavor but there is some of that bitterness a little bit of the woodiness but um from uh from the chicory but it it is a great it is a great drink to accompany certainly with the sweet you know the sweetness of the you know of the beignet so you could eat the beignet as it is or you can dip it in the you know in the cafe um but uh, either way i mean you're going to enjoy it and um the for me i don't know if this is common practice or maybe someone has mentioned it before but i would just say that you know even at eating the beignets you're left over Mm -hmm. with a lot of powdered sugar you know so so you do the thing you do the thing right yeah (laughs) you can do that you can do that thing yes that's obviously very uh a reasonable thing to do but um i would also take the opportunity to um Pour some of the extra powdered sugar into the cafe au lait and sweeten that up. Okay. A bit. okay. I guess that makes sense. And then, and then you can also like take up all the, the thing. Yeah. And then yeah, do the yeah. thing too. You know, that's, okay. that's fine. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. That, that's, that's what I would do. Just lick the damn bowl. No, absolutely. No, I, I totally get it. Um, but yeah, I mean the beignets, you can see, it's just nice how it's, um, it's the, the beignet itself is, I would say it's kind of a delicate treat. I mean, it, there is a chewiness, you know, density to it, but it is just a perfect kind of snack. 
that you can enjoy any time of the day. And considering that they are open 24 seven, like it totally, it definitely, uh, you know, um, makes a, makes it a good experience at any time of the day. So, um, so is this place only beignets and coffee or is it other stuff too? You know, I forgot to take a picture of the menu, but the beignets are definitely the characteristic, you know, the main thing you're going to get. I mean, drink wise, I've, I've seen people get like, orange juice i guess you know um so but like breakfasty things then no i think as far as you know the variety of menu i think it's really going to be the beignet right okay and your beignet is going to be what you see here it's like a serving of three beignets you know that's going to be typical um and you can just get multiple orders of those if you want you know and then um here's a picture of the beignet as you know being eaten you can see again it's not a flaky pastry it's a a fluffy pastry um but Very uh, beasty. yeah you can see how a lot of it has you know when it when it hits the you know the fry and it it puffs up and you can see a lot of that you know ha- that action in there and then just the mountain of powdered sugar as well yeah. it's uh it's quite as thick as the beignet itself <laughs> yeah it really is we'll we'll but- don't worry we will see more of these um uh, as we go along, um, maybe not today, but soon. Don't worry. Okay. This is not the last appearance of a beignet in this trip. Okay. Uh, no, good, good. <laughs> you got to do the, the flavor profile of all of them. Right. But I, it does make me wonder and try to see if you can recall yourself because I've had a number of. There are a small handful of examples you can bring up here in in L.A., but certainly one of the examples I will mention is Disneyland, um, because Disneyland, mm-hmm. uh, like at the uh, at their French, what what is that place? The French um, place? Did they call it New Orleans, or I forget what they I call it. Disneyland, it's French Quarter. Okay, <laughs> I think that's what they call it. Yeah, yeah. So in that in in that part of the park, right, they serve the Mickey beignets, right? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that I'm just trying to recall without having it like New Orleans right Square. Now. New Orleans Square. Okay. So the Mickey Beignets, how does it compare? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you know, it's fried, it's fried dough. I mean, like, you know, you can't get around <laughs> that. That's true. It's yeah. there. Can't go wrong with that, honestly. Yeah. I think it's the powdered sugar, you know, the mountain and that makes it like, yeah, you could mm-hmm. definitely. But, yeah, you know, I remember not uh-huh. enough at the Disneyland once then, not enough uh-huh. powdered sugar. Is that maybe, what it maybe once. Yeah. But, you know. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's nice, too, is, um, you know, if you get it to go similarly, like even Disneyland, right, they give it in a bag and they, they mm-hmm. pile it with powdered sugar. Right. And so you, you mm-hmm. shake the bag and, you know, kind of aerate all the powdered yeah. sugar on there. And you can't you would do something similar uh, with your. Cafe, uh, Cafe du Monde beignets. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I'd say that the ones at Disneyland are probably like a little lighter. Um, I don't think it's as fried, like the exterior of the fry is, there's a little more, it's a little more pronounced. I think, you know, it's not crunchy. Let's put it, it's not crunchy, Mm. but like, um, you can tell it is, there's been more time to let it fry compared to the beignets. Yeah, the, the pictures there look pretty pale. Yeah, I mean, this is only one example, right? But yeah, I think yeah. this is similar to what we've we've kind of seen. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Cafe Beignet, definitely a great um, first stop, you know, to, uh, to Cafe start. Cafe what? Cafe Du Monde. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. We, we'll fix Got this in post. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure, sure. <laughs> Um, anyway, so again, we're hitting up all the food places here. There are some non-food places in between and I don't know if we'll ever get to them. Why waste your time? Yeah, I know. So the next place we'll talk (laughs) about (laughs) is a uh, place actually uh, outside of the quarter, maybe a couple miles away. And actually I was looking at my itinerary and, you know, and the places I'd been, I, I did a good amount of exploring outside the quarter. I mean, relatively, you know, to maybe what most people might do they would stay most of their time in the quarter because there is a lot to explore a lot of a lot of the streets and the shops that you can even in that relatively small area you could definitely spend a good amount of time there but i found myself exploring different parts of um of the quarter um or outside rather so 
I um I'm trying to look. I don't know if I have any of the uh um uh, picks that I wanted to share here, interestingly enough. But the next spot that I visited is actually a convenience store. Um mm. yeah, it was kind of a wow. off yeah, it wasn't uh necessarily a, a big name restaurant or anything like that, but um it was a convenience store. I'd say I'd consider it maybe kind of in the maybe what they call the mid city air uh, neighborhood uh, over there. I don't know. Let me see if I can bring it up in the map because uh, that would be a little more useful. It's a place called um, Eat Well, and I found this place as I was watching, you know, several videos on YouTube of you know people doing different tours and you know just visiting different places around New Orleans. And I think this was part of a series of um, of places that of food that maybe are not as well known you know they are okay. kind of more oh, wow. cultural and specific to the region but maybe not as common to maybe a you know a tourist for example mm -hmm. unless you know or unless you come across something you really do your research but eat well is um is a spot there and i think i was on my way from the french quarter on my way to um uh, City Park, which is a huge park in, in New Orleans, but uh, I was taking uh, the streetcar up there, and um, I don't remember, um, let's see here, Eat Well, we'll take a few pictures here, yeah, so you can see, there's the convenience store, right, just like your typical gas station, uh -huh. almost like gas station, like, yeah, you got your wall yeah. of drinks, you got your concessions, you got, yeah, you know, all the essentials there. But, oh man, I wish I had my, um, man, well, I can find some pictures here and we'll show them with you here. Uh, one, two of the things I wanted to bring up. One was, um, this dish here on the bottom left. Ooh. This is what you call yakamane. Here's another example and it's a go container. Nice. Yeah. So yakamane is uh, a dish I came across again, just through watching these videos. It is kind of Asian noodle meets Creole flavors. So think okay. of an Asian noodle like what ramen or pho, right? Something mm -hmm. like that. But um, you have kind of the distinct flavors of you know Creole seasoning Asian. or Cajun seasoning oh, okay. or whatever. You know, a lot of um, you know onion powder, garlic powder, you know pepper, um, various herbs and spices. You know, uh, what else? I mean. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Definitely, definitely not like your um, your typical uh, ramen broth, miso, whatever, you know. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely a very interesting take. And as far as, you know, Yakumi, there's so many different variations depending on who's preparing it. Um, you know, really? who, yeah, I mean, it. they're not necessarily all the same. Um, okay. but this, the Yakumi that I happen to have included a com combination of different meats, of course, one of each, no, but, um, beef, I think chicken and shrimp, and there's also a hard boiled egg. And let me tell you it, there's no, there's no denying that it is a hard boiled egg. It's like uh, super really? cooked through. Um, and, but that's totally fine. Um, but, uh, so we have the Yakumi there. And there's another dish I wanted to um, to find here, but I'm not quite sure if I'm going to find it. But there's a sign here from the counter. You can see here, hot boudin. And um, I don't know if you've had boudin or familiar with what it is. It boudin. Like it's not allowed to be said on YouTube. Yes, it sounds a little dirty, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, boudin is a uh, um, it's a sausage, basically. It's the oh yeah, it's definitely not allowed on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on its preparation, yes, and the context <laughs> is very different. Um, but boudin is, uh, you know, you take a sausage casing and you stuff it typically with uh, uh, things like rice and meat, oh. onion, herbs, things like that. So. Um, it's you stuff all of that into a sausage casing and there are different mm -hmm. types i guess i i don't know too much i just cursory looking at uh you know there are different types of, um from france and you know how they brought that over here but oh, okay. um this i i wish i had a pic i wish i had the picture to show you i'll maybe i'll overlay it here or maybe not because i'm too lazy but either way i'll um, never see it 
That's right. You'll <laughs> God damn it. But just think about kind of a long, um, you know, elongated sausage. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is a slippery slope we're taking here on this channel. <laughs> I don't know. But um, it it definitely, let me put it this way. It, oh. it definitely was didn't meet what I was expecting it to be because I, I've had a limited exposure to Boudin, but in different uh, contexts, usually in barbecue preparation. Um, mm. But this is more of maybe what I would call Boudin uh, Blanc. It's a white boudin. Um, it's not, it's cooked. I, I feel like it's steamed or boiled or something like that because the casing is pale. It's like a white okay. kind of casing, you know, with the, with the filling in there. And um, the casing, it's like when you, when you bite into it, it is not snappy at all. It's like you got to oh. chew through it and kind of <laughs> rip it. <laughs> yeah. But the flavors are there, you know, the rice is pretty good. And then you have the meats and the, you know, all the vegetable that that's in there as well. And, and the typical kind of Cajun spices, I'd say, um, or Creole spices are certainly in there. Uh, I, the flavor is there. It's just the texture, I think, was a little bit off, um, maybe okay. different than what I expected. Not that it's necessarily bad. It's just different, you know, mm -hmm. from what I expected. Um, but the the going back a little bit to the yakumane the the mystery of the yakumane is is uh yeah it is a mystery like there's no clear um origin i think as far as i know as to where it came from or how it's like evolved over time but like i said um the preparation can be different like i don't these noodles that they're using are different than what mm -hmm. some other person could use like if you could be super basic and use like spaghetti noodles you know, in your boudin, okay. I mean, in your yakamane, you know, even mm. the name, I don't, I don't even know. I mean, when you think about it, it's like, it's like chow mein, yakamane, yeah. yakasa, I don't know. It's uh, it's a very, it sounds, it almost sounds Asian, right? In some ways. Oh, yeah, almost. Sure. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Fair. Fair. <laughs> but uh, there's some distinct, uh, again, cultural intersection here with, uh, with the flavors of, uh, of Creole and Cajun in here. So, um, also, I wanted to mention this kind of an aside, but in the context of what we're talking about in New Orleans, you know, particularly we we are the food. I think majority that we're trying to talk about is uh, Creole um, cuisine, mm -hmm. which yeah. is there, which apparently there is a distinction between that and Cajun cuisine. So, oh, okay. yeah. So Cajun is um, cuisine usually found. Uh, elsewhere, outside of New Orleans, you'd find it, uh, you know, you could find it throughout the state of Louisiana, for example, or like mm -hmm. the outskirts of that. But um, out there, that's more Cajun style food. And I think uh, one of the one of the dishes I think distinguishing is like the seafood boil, the crawfish and things like that. Uh -huh. I think yeah. that's certainly more characteristically Cajun versus Creole um oh. and so i'm just throwing the, that out there and i'm probably still going to mess up and like use those words interchangeably which i'm not supposed to do but um mm. uh, when we're in new orleans i think the cuisine that i'm trying to target is supposed to be more creole yeah. okay so like the yaka main would be creole sure okay <laughs> okay <laughs> let's go with that we'll have to do uh as much as I've eaten, um, I've still done a poor amount of research. But interestingly enough, this uh, this spot again, it's like an eight. It's like a small Asian restaurant, like fast food restaurant. So you have like Chinese food, you know, fried rice, you know, uh, chow mein, uh, orange chicken. There's even some. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even some of the pictures they have like. Um, uh, like bung mi here, you know, so oh, nice because you know, you have the French influence, the Vietnamese kind of deal here. So, there mm -hmm. are apparently some solid Vietnamese, certainly with some Vietnamese uh spots here in New Orleans or Louisiana, or but okay. um, uh, didn't have too much of that. But I'm just letting you know that they exist, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very interesting, but yeah, so that um, that was the uh, yucca main from, from the Eat Well convenience store, <laughs> just uh. What's nice is like, um, you know, uh, a number of places, certainly for tour, I, I would say for tourists, at least, I don't know. I, I hope also for like, uh, residents of, of the city, 
I found that public transport was pretty pretty good to get around oh, to nice. like where I needed to go, you know. Um I didn't have to rent a car except for one thing, uh but but mo- most of the time using public transport, uh whether it's the bus or the streetcars, um even the ferry. They have a ferry uh that goes from across the Mississippi River, so. Oh, cool. But um yeah, so that's eat well, but uh moving on from there, we um move to our next spot. Our next dish we're talking about are um, po' boys. Now, nice. um, we've heard of po' boys before, probably. We've heard it in different contexts. Uh, but po' boy is a basically a sandwich. It's a big old sandwich, um, almost sub-style. You know, you got this kind of nice long roll. Typically, it's a French-style roll. And um, in that... I think most of us, I think even for myself, even before I was doing all the kind of looking into this, you know, you, I think most of us kind of assume that a po' boy is a sandwich filled with shrimp, uh, which it certainly can, you know, there's no Mm -hmm. shortage of those, whether it's fried shrimp or grilled shrimp or whatever. Um, But a po' boy is just a sandwich in, in general. Um, and it could have any sort of um, filling or ingredient in there. So whether it's shrimp or uh, roast beef or, you know, chicken, pork, even uh, oysters. I, I wish I'd try one of those, but um, fried oysters, right? Or yeah. even regular oysters. I don't know. I feel like because a poor boy is a poor boy, right? Poor boy sure. sandwich. That's uh-huh. its origin. Uh-huh. I feel like oyster kills counter, doesn't it? Well, I think it depends on the region. I think that you're you're sourcing it from, you know, where you're getting it from. Um, I, you know, I, I hope the next time uh, we get to visit, and I say we, um, uh, I hope we can royal we. Uh, yeah, no, I think the oh, we, is that we here French for yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were there that long. I'm uh, <clears throat> very cultured now. Um, <laughs> mm. Mm. but, um, certainly different variations you can have. So it's really any sort of thing, uh, of a sandwich that you can have here. But in this case, you know, to stick with the kind of the tradition, I think, and th- what, yeah, the standard of it, uh, we went with a, um, a fried shrimp, uh, po' boy and we went, uh, we, I keep saying we now the Royal, we, I visited this spot called uh, the Parkway Bakery and Tavern, and um, that was not too far from Eat Well. Um, at this point, I don't remember offhand which I had first, whether it was... Oh, really? Actually, I know now. I, I had the por- the po' boy first. I just Uh-oh. found the pictures of the Yakamane. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, and sequentially, the po' boy came first, so... Well. All right, so there you go. But this is um, a kind of this is this one of the many examples of kind of a neighborhood restaurant. You know, a restaurant that you'll find in a neighborhood in a street corner. You know, um, it's just kind of a nice. classic kind of setup, and it's more common, I think, than than you'd think. Um, just and these kind of places okay. have been around for a very long time, and um, yeah, they've really made a reputation and name for themselves. So I was very excited. Um, and I'll get to a little bit um, on that later, um, as far as the different types of po' boys and whatnot. But, uh, but yeah, you can kind of already see here when you when you walk in. Actually, there you're. There's an outdoor area, some outdoor seating, and then on on the other side are entryways that go. Um, you can see towards the window, uh, it's actually an entrance that goes to a bar. Um, oh, nice. and then the other entrance, which is kind of behind me is going into like kind of, a the place where you would like counter, where you would, uh, order, mm. order the food, like for the rest, like restaurant proper. Um, but let's take can, a look at the Pope. One, one picture real quick. Is it this one? Yeah. What is that Filipino family doing right in, right in the foreground? Here? I don't know. If Filipino. I mean, they could be some other variation of true, but. but how the the population over there? How Asian is it? Well, you have um, I do see a lot of uh, Vietnamese families. Really? Um, okay. So there's probably something to be said there. 
again, I don't know what the particular demographic of this family is here, but uh, maybe mm. we'll have to look Fair at that. I, I don't but quite know. Just it is quite more interesting. Asian than I than I expected. Like gotcha. in general, over there. I think yeah, yeah. I, I I would say so too. I think I came across certainly a lot more um, people who work there. Actually, the guy who sir who uh, was uh, my waiter at uh, Cafe Du Monde, um, mm-hmm. he was from Vietnam. He wow. uh, he was sharing with me that he had um, he was a refugee from Vietnam and he had oh jumped. damn from different places, including the Philippines where, you know, he, he, where I shared, I was from our family was from, and, uh, he had mentioned he had uh, spent some time over there and hopped around a few different countries before finding his way down here in, in new Orleans. So, um, there you go. There's one data point right there. Um, only and- Vietnam got it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a one look at the, <laughs> Let's take a look at the po' boy, shall we? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So here's a picture of the po' boy. Um, it's, okay. again, that long sandwich. This is a large. A, a small would be about half the size. Um, okay. But why go small when you can go large? And so that's what we did. And by we, I mean we. And by we, I mean yes. So <laughs> um, it, it's a. So you can see here the bread. The bread, again, is... It, it's a firm exterior. It's not soft. You know, it's kind of, um, uh, I wouldn't say glassy, but you know, it, it, you know, you can tap it, right. It almost has this, yeah. Yeah. Kind of this firmness to it, you know, mm-hmm. something that you can kind of break, you know, and snap. Yeah. You know, and it'll like flake, you know, yeah. those kinds of things. Yeah. And then the inside though is, is soft, you know, it's a little pillowy. And I think it has to do, if I read a little correctly, that has to do with the fact, you know, this type of bread uses um, more fla- more water, less flour. Okay, so there's more moisture in there. Um, and then when it steams up, then um, it creates, it just creates this texture as a result, you know. Okay. Um, but you can see here, you have the shrimp, the fried shrimp, um, and then you get it dressed and dressed means it's in this case it's filled with all the toppings and stuff the tomato the lettuce the mayo you know mm-hmm. all the all the accoutrement up Hell there yeah. but yeah here's a another view of the sandwich nice they, they gave you a, they cut it in half for you so you get a nice cross section get all the shrimp in there um and i got to tell you this was um a great uh foray i think into the world of po' boys and what they really are, uh, what they should be. It, um, it was really, uh, really enjoyable. You know, I thought I was actually kind of, uh, worried that I wasn't going to finish it, that I wasn't going to finish it what? in one sitting. Yeah, I'm serious. I'm not sure why, well, but this was your fourth place in the, cause in the sandwich hours. was already like very large. So, mm-hmm. you know, I just don't know. And I had a lot of places to go. Right. So, um, uh, maybe I was also scared there. Like if I ate this, then, would I have room for the rest? Um, <laughs> we'll find out that there was. <laughs> there always is. Oh, is that a bottle of Barks? Yeah, I got some some nice. root beer there. Yeah, I managed to get that. So um, that was nice and refreshing, too. Never seen it in a bottle. Must be good. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. You know, uh, the glass makes it tastier, right? Of course. Um, Tasting value is what herb. Yeah. And then you oh, almost, what is that sauce? and then you almost want to make sure it's just a it's just hot sauce, you know. Okay. Uh, there's um, what is I think it's crystals. That's one of the popular ones. Tabasco is actually bottled in Louisiana, so you see a lot of that too. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's good. It's in good taste, you know. That you douse your your po' boy in, in some hot sauce there, um, and enjoy it that way. So it uh, was certainly a great great bite the shrimp was like super like it was great breading super crunchy um and the shrimp while the shrimp itself is still like nice and plump it's like it's Mm -hmm. a great bite um and then you know the the other you know the other the the dressings in there i guess the the lettuce and things it's like not crazy it's like it's just a little refreshing um Mm -hmm. amongst all the the fried shrimp but man if uh, if i had a chance again i would certainly I would try to get. I would try others as well, other varieties. Uh, in Before. addition to the shrimp, you can get like a surf and turf with that, and like the roast beef uh-huh. or something. Or again, you have fried. You had oyster in there. It's just a mm-hmm. whole good variety of um, uh, things to try. Uh, and yeah, shoot. I mean, it was. Um, 
it was great. It was just uh, a wonderful um, place to, to, to be and just in a kind of a, an institution there. Um, so I, ha- so just to clarify, I had the po' boy first before I went to eat well. Oh. So, right, right. so eat well, uh, I can kind of go back and share here. Like here's a picture of my Yakamain. Um, there's the beef, right? The shrimp and there's chicken in there too. So, mm. And here's the boudin. Here's the oh, boudin. Yes. There it is. Let me make sure we've all been waiting for. I don't know if I need to blur this or like uh, <laughs> put some disclaimer on here. But you can yeah, see. I mean, that, uh, yeah, that I mean. Kind of sus. Yeah, you can see like um, actually the, the, the way it was served was wrapped in foil. So uh, okay. it must have been warmed or prepared, you mm-hmm. know. I think in some steamed or boiled preparation, I feel. Um, again, the 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 casing is pale. The you know, yeah. What's up? According to your notes, you said steamed. Uh huh. Okay. So. Well, I could just be talking out of my behind, so you know, there's what? there's always that too, and that does happen. So more but, likely. Yeah. So there you go. Um, just also shout out to my. Uh, to the streetcar that brought me there. Nice. So, <laughs> okay. okay. This is one. This is one of the many, uh, few, uh, many streetcars that that run. There's like five. I say many, but there's like five major lines. But um, hey, I think I'm not bad. I think I managed to ride most of them. So, um, nice. I did. I did make a point because I really enjoyed that, and I'll get to oh, that. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, just one of the streetcars there. It's it's a really it's a really great experience, and people use that as legitimate, you know, public transportation. Mm-hmm. And it's great because it's okay. cheap. It's like a buck twenty-five, you know, for a wow. fare. Yeah. So that's and deep, cheaper than our than our buses now. Yeah, and uh, in public transport, yeah, it's it's uh, that's great. great. So uh, we, we took care of Eat Well. We took care of Parkway Tavern. So from there, uh, I mentioned here that I uh, well, I visited a lemonade stand while I was in uh, City Park, and uh, won't get into like all the details there, Just but like, like, like a kid's lemonade stand, or well, I think a kid was serving me out there, but it was a family, certainly. You okay. know, it's like oh, a food, okay, okay. like a little pop up tent or something, you know, and um, oh, it was okay. so like, it, so- mm-hmm. yeah, they got a legitimate yeah. thing going on there, as far as I know. But let me see if I can. Um, I don't have the exact name. I was trying to find the name because I don't think I I remember or took a picture of like the name of the place itself. But um, just showing that uh, this is City Park. It's a huge space, right? You can see here. Um, I barely explored like this bottom eighth of it or something, where oh, we okay. see the gardens, the Museum of Art. Um, you know, uh, there's a mini co- uh, golf course or whatever. Um, like mini golf or small golf course? It's mini golf. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so next, like right outside the museum of art, um, there was a, like a little, there was a stand there, you know, a lemonade stand and, you know, um, just saying that they, it was a nice refreshing, you know, uh, way to kind of, after all the kind of exploring in this area, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you just like pick your flavors. You got different fruits. You got you know lemon, and orange, and pineapple. So they just kind of take bits of those and they, they basically macerate them. You know, kind of mash them together. <laughs> macerate. They yeah. what? Macerate. Uh-huh. You never With heard that, that word? Emotion? I think you mean a different word. Is that- <laughs> <laughs> macerate. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> and. Sure. Uh, you know, I think what made it good is um, all the sugar that they put in there. You can see like these scoops of sugar that they're just like, pouring in there, uh, <laughs> okay. along with the fruit. And I'm not complaining. I thought it was uh, it was great. Um, okay. I, again, if I remember the name or if I find it, I'll I'll share it down there. But uh, again, it was just a way just to remind me that yeah, I had to beat the heat. There, again, there were there's a good amount of shade in some places, but like some areas, you just gotta bear with it and just like it's yeah something else i just want to mention also like here at the at the park there's this area here called big lake and it mm-hmm. is a big lake as the name uh, suggests uh, what that, guessed. yeah but it reminded me a lot of echo park because uh um, oh, really well it had a lot of like the i think what i consider the two kind of characteristic things it has like the swan boats 
Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And then it also has like the fountain that shoots up from, oh. from the lake. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it takes to remind you of Echo Park. Well, yeah. What else would remind you of uh, Echo Park? I don't know. Fenced off water. Um, I, have an empty lake. I'm trying to think of like more positive things here. So. Oh, please. It's Echo All Park. Right. <laughs> so... um. All right. Fine. Oh, it's along the river, Mississippi River. Or well, yeah. River? There's, I mean, you'll see that a lot of, you know, New Orleans and the city, like, you know, they kind of go along. Uh, I don't know if this is the Mississippi oh, River not, itself, but this is just another is body of water. Yeah. But I see. It's fine. It's yeah. It's uh, surprisingly cool, th- this part, this rivery part, is not as scenic. Huh? Let's put it that way. Oh, okay. Yeah, not not like what you'd expect. It's it's like the la river but it doesn't have with, all the concrete i'm oh, just okay. saying that like it's not a site it's not really a site to see yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. but it's got more water I'll tell you that right now oh, than the LA. <laughs> more water uh, well. but uh the next spot from there from city from city park i walk down um to my next spot uh how do i pronounce i had to write this down phonetically uh <laughs> Lyuza. I hope I got that right. Like oozes by the track. Okay. Um, and, and I think they call it by the tracks because I think it's like near either what is currently or maybe was like track racing tracks or something. Oh, racing tracks. Yeah. Okay. Not train tracks. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, so like, uh, like Lyuz- <laughs> by the track, um, is a small, again, another restaurant, uh, kind of neighborhood restaurant and they, uh, one, the one dish I wanted to try there and had read about, um, is another po' boy, but it is a, okay. it's a barbecue shrimp po' boy. And as we will see shortly, it is definitely a different take from what I had expected. I'd only had one oh. other po' boy before and already this was different. So I don't <laughs> get what's going on, but, <laughs> but, uh, this restaurant is I'd say more of a bar. I mean, you got a lot of good seat. You still got a decent amount of seating. It's not a huge place, but you got a decent amount of seating, but it's more of a bar vibe. So, um, uh, let me, I have pictures of the food and they are here. So this is, um, the barbecue shrimp po' boy. So you can see it is definitely, it's still already different than what we've seen at, um, at Parkway. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, if I remember, so you have a mountain uh, or pile of shrimp um, that's overflowing from, you know, the bread. The bread itself has a slightly different texture than uh, Parkway. It's mm-hmm. a little less uh, firm, I think. It, yeah, I think I it is. Assume. I think it's a little. I think it does hold up a little better. But yeah, that exterior oh. is definitely different. Like it's not the you know the firm um kind of shattery kind of uh, uh mm-hmm. appearance or texture from uh the other po' boy but what this is is actually the bread is not cut in half it's actually hollowed out if you can kind of think of it it's like cored out yeah <laughs> and then and <laughs> yeah. then the shrimp is stuffed in there and overflows from there you know you kind of get what i'm getting at here it's like oh yeah yeah, yeah. So and it's then like you, a shell of bread yeah basically um, and then you can see here, there's like this, uh, pool of sauce and mm-hmm. what they, what they refer to as a new Orleans barbecue sauce. And so of course, okay. you know, knowing me, you had to try it, us, yeah. we had to try it, um, barbecue, right? I mean, just that name yeah. alone just kind of catches my attention. Um, by the way, we have a, a serving of barks uh root beer this is nice. but from the can so more okay. typical setup but still um so why is it always barks not that i'm complaining i, per- I love uh, barks but. i don't know if it was all i think this was maybe the only other time we might see uh, barks i just thought it was a nice refreshing i mean it, it's been a while since i had a good root beer so yeah it's a good so go-to for the other places was it a w or just not root beer at all yeah not root beer just yeah you know, okay other okay. drinks yeah um so how was this it was mm-hmm. different um <laughs> yeah it was good but it was definitely not it's like it brings the question what is new orleans 
barbecue sauce. Uh-huh. I, I don't quite know. Okay, so let me just say, biting into it, it is mm-hmm. not what I thought barbecue sauce was going to be. Um, of course, we have, you know, I have my, I wouldn't say preferences, but my, uh, uh, what I'm used to, I guess, as far as the flavors of barbecue, of course, used to mm-hmm. stuff of Texas and Kansas City and, you know, whatever, those types of things. Even, you know, as uh, something as basic as a, uh, what, Sweet Baby Ray's or something, barbecue oh, sauce. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Um, but it's none of that. This is a different take altogether. Um, this particular dish, it was very forward on like um, a very acid kind of uh, a take. So there's a lot mm-hmm. of heavy on lemon and pepper. Oh, okay. So you can definitely taste those most prominently, especially in this dish. Um, in fact, it felt like it took over the whole thing. But um, from I did a little bit, just tried to look a little bit like what is typically in um, uh, a New Orleans barbecue sauce. It's mm-hmm. so you have lemon, pepper, you have um, like garlic. Um, I think what brings the savoriness is the there's Worcester. Worcester sauce, <laughs> Worcester mm-hmm. sauce in there. That one, yeah. <laughs> exactly. W sauce. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's what brings in, you know, kind of pairs down with that acidity. But this was definitely like acid forward, like acid, you know, leaning on that a lot. So I don't think it was, it wasn't, I'm going to tell you again, it was not a bad thing. I, I actually okay. enjoyed it. It was just a different uh, take. Um, from what I'm used to, right, as far as barbecue mm-hmm. sauce goes, um, it's almost like a gravy, to be honest. Like it's kind of, it's got a nice consistency. Like it's, it, you can pour it over uh, easily, nicely pour oh, over cool. all the shrimp and whatever. Like, and then it also comes with pickles, and you can see actually there's like a wedge of lemon uh, somewhere in there too. Oh, really? So uh, acid is like really the big uh, kind of thing going in here. Um, <laughs> The shrimp itself was great too. I mean, well cooked and uh, it was it was enjoyable too. So um, uh, overall, again, it's just a different take on a po boy and a different an introduction. I think for me, like what New Orleans barbecue flavor is kind of supposed to be or what it can be. So um, yeah, I mean, would I go back? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's just um, but there and there are other foods in there too, other different types of things that they serve. Um, that I'd like to try sometime, but yeah, uh, this barbecue shrimp po' boy is, um, what you're the kind of the characteristic thing you're going to want to, going to try there again. It's Liuza by the tracks, man. I'm so, so Liuza. Is that what I said? That's the first thing you said. Yeah. Okay. Like Liuza's. Okay, man. Okay. Maybe, maybe I can't go back cause I just can't, <laughs> can't pronounce it. It's too much fine so let's see from um from there uh i've made several other stops in between now i went back to the hotel <laughs> oh okay, okay so I, I went back to the hotel so i could prepare for dinner <laughs> of course That's uh, part, the reason not partly eat. because i wanted to change i wanted to freshen up mm-hmm. but i also wanted to uh basically put on pants um oh wow. <laughs> fancy dinner uh, yeah it's kind of a this next spot here is probably mm, is it it's actually not the only fancy so-called fancy place but it's probably one probably up there as far as one of the the fanciest places from this trip um mm-hmm. and it's a restaurant called uh brigston's and it is pronounced brigston's as opposed to brigston's um and brigston's is a a uh a restaurant out in it's outside the quarter okay so uh it's a good excuse actually to take the streetcar um, of course the so only reason yeah absolutely so i was lucky like the hotel i was staying in actually goes along it's like sits along the oh. uh the streetcar one of the streetcars and mm-hmm. um take that all the way to uh nearby to where the restaurant is and it's super easy to get to maybe a half an hour or so you're there it's in a neighborhood, I think, of Carrollton or East Carrollton. I also heard it referred to an area of Riverbend because it is near uh, an area where the river bends. Um, <laughs> but this restaurant is uh, kind of a fine dining setting of Creole and Southern food. Um, but it is kind of an, I would consider it definitely another neighborhood restaurant only because of where it's situated. It's... Um, 
it's got a, it's actually a, it was a house that was converted into a restaurant. Kind of sounds familiar, like it. right? It's like, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but I'd say compared to some of the, pillow? no, it's not. Well, let me think about that. Blue. Oh, it, dep- hey, it, is. it depends on oh. the, uh, depends on the, uh, the lighting, right? I guess so. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Brixton's is, uh, it's like if someone invited you to their house for dinner and that person was a professional, highly trained chef. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so dream. I think what it is, is like, it's got that, um, level of, you know, intimacy, uh, level of, uh, kind of a little more relaxed environment, you know? So even though you have this finer dining uh, execution and preparation, it's in this environment that feels more relaxed, you know, okay. and where you feel a little more more welcome and friendly overall, you know? So mm. um, that was, uh, yeah, Brixton. So, uh, so, you know, you could, there are a lot of regulars. You could, I, as I was having dinner, I could notice a lot of people coming through and they sounded that they were, you know, regulars. They were, they've been going there a long time. They're like friends with the chef or the family. Um, I think even the hostess, the front of house was there, has been there a long time. And so they know oh, okay. a lot of the people there and, and they know, and they know her. So, um, it, it just kind of makes you, yeah, feel a little bit more welcome, I think overall. Um, which is quite interesting. Um, I will say though, I'm not, I don't quite get, uh, with that said, cause as I'm going to go through the food, um, mm-hmm. I don't know what it is about these fancy restaurants being dark and dim <laughs> inside. How can I take pictures of my food if it's so dark? I'm pretty sure you know the answer to that. <laughs> You watch the menu, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but with that said, yeah, I'd need to switch gears here because the uh, the pictures, you know, I, I I had to, I just took them on my phone as opposed to like mm-hmm. take them on a um, on the camera or whatever. But yeah, uh-huh. so um, I was I was kind oh. of uh, we'll just kind of get into the menu here, so. The menu um, actually included a small insert of um, of this uh, of a prefix menu that we're doing for an event called Culinary Week. That's cool. Oh, okay. K and C U K. Damn, cool. C O O L. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's what I was expecting. I don't know why you threw a K in there. <laughs> Kool Aid. Um, so. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Uh-huh. We're full of surprises here. Um, so somebody the royal we again. Yes, that's right. So the the prefix menu. This is culinary week. Is like dine LA. You know, have restaurants that participate uh, in this mm-hmm. event and offer certain menu prefix menus for good va- for good prices and things like that. So people have a you know something different to try. But mm-hmm. um, the types of menus, the types of items in there didn't quite line up with what I was interested to try. So I just went with the regular menu. And so I actually started with a, um, with a, a drink, uh, not a barks, but, uh, a cocktail in this case. Wow. And, um, yeah, I know fancy. Okay. Being fancy. That's true. I want to describe before I get to the, what I'm talking about here, what you see in the background, um, is kind of a doorway, right? Towards, there in the background there so again it's a house so you think about that like people are just kind of entering the doorway here right and Mm -hmm. actually off to the side it's a kind of a narrow hallway you know maybe have like two people standing side by side two or three people but on on one side of the wall are chairs where people are sitting maybe like two or three chairs where people are waiting for to be seated and then there's also a a booth where um you know, where the hostess, the front of house is, uh, you know, greeting and, and, you know, hosting and all that. Um, so I was like waiting, you know, in the, uh, in that space. Um, but there are people already sitting down, so couldn't sit down and I didn't want to go past that booth. 
right? But um, the hallways only got so much space. So what ends up happening is like people are coming in and out and I basically become like this unofficial doorman, you know, kind of <laughs> holding the door, opening the door or whatever so people can go through and, you know, <laughs> trying to give them space. It's kind of mm -hmm. interesting. Anyway, but they, um, further down the hallway behind the booth, that's where I was seated. There were a couple of tables along that hallway. Um, and so that's where I was uh, enjoying my meal. But this is a, uh, a drink. Um, it, it's very simple. It was a gin, uh, cucumber, and lime. Super simple. And it was great. Super refreshing um, and light. So nothing complicated about it. Just just a nice drink altogether. Yeah. What's up? Did you... Uh, I'm just curious what the, what it's called. Oh, um, you know, I have a picture of the menu, but then the menu is, uh, it doesn't have a good picture of the drink menu. If you, <laughs> let's look it up together. <laughs> oh no, back to Yelp we go. Brigston's, uh, New Orleans. What is it called? A Briggs, uh, Brigston's, Brigston's. Oh, okay. Um, so we'll look at, um, we'll look at that together. <laughs> internet uh this is the regular menu do i have the drink menu in here uh actually i don't know i don't think they do not here but pro i think they have it on yelp so oh, we're, gonna look, we're gonna have to look on yelp uh the production value here we go all right so we're looking at menu because i was trying to remember ah there you go the cucumber gimlet oh okay yeah Sear sucker gin, cucumber, and lime. Easy. Easy. Nice. It was it was great. I was considering to like maybe get a non-alcoholic cocktail, but like I'm like, nah. Uh, let's try it. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad no, I did. Good. Yeah. Let me just show where Brighton's is. Um boom. Uh so where was I? So like I was staying somewhere around here i guess somewhere around here and you can see this path here of like the little blue squares that's the um that's the path of the uh of the streetcar the saint charles streetcar that runs along oh nice it's one of wow. the yeah so just runs all the way along and then i just get dropped off in uh Carrollton and just walk a block or so and i'm there at brixton's super convenient it's, yeah it's great really like that um so back to the meal here. Uh, we have my uh, waiter who's taking my order. After serving me that, I decide to get an order of what is it? The New Orleans barbecue shrimp. <laughs> oh, nice! Hey, <laughs> with uh, with gotta... yep, with shrimp calls. I yeah, was actually very going. interested. I think. I think this was definitely a menu item that was recommended, you know, that you could read online. Okay. Like you can definitely get this item. Um, but having had the po' boy from mm -hmm. uh, Liuza's, I definitely wanted to see like, what is this supposed <laughs> to be? I don't get it. So I want to understand it a little better, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so here is the a, a picture. The oh, okay. This is not great. This is not doing very well. All right, hidden Mickey. What is going on here? It's like it's not great. That's what you get, you know. It's like it's not okay. That's decent. Um, sure. so what we have here is the shrimp, right? Obviously, uh -huh. you can see it here in a pool of the barbecue, the New Orleans barbecue sauce, and then a shrimp cala, which is basically a fritter, you know, like a fried okay. fritter with shrimp bits, which is great. I got to tell you, this was a great start. Um, oh, good. The dish, just overall on its own, not making any comparison, this was a great dish. I really enjoyed this. Um, this barbecue sauce, as far as New, or New Orleans barbecue sauce, this is probably like what I'm more, maybe more used to for my palate, but um, this is definitely a more savory barbecue sauce. It was like near perfect. Oh, I feel like um, even though there was the acidity, there's some acidity in there, it wasn't as strong. Uh, there was definitely more savoriness, like from the Worcester sauce, um, and I'm sure some other, you know, ingredients played into there, pepper and so forth. But like this is, um, this was a great sauce. It's like if you if you were to give me a New Orleans barbecue sauce um, from the limited stuff I've had, this would probably be it. Like I, I really, okay. this was great. 
the shrimp is great. It's peeled. It's um, it's plump. It's just it's cooked just right. Got a nice snap bite into it. Like you know, no complaints there. Um, and then the ca- the collas, the like this fritter. It you can see it's fried. You know, it's got a pan fried in there, but it's not crunchy like a hash brown or anything. You know, or like those other fritters that are like super crispy. Um, it's kind of delicate actually. But, um, you know, it's fried enough. So you get some of the you, the flavors come out pretty well. Um, so it's, you know, the the fritter, it's kind of like a, you're right, like a potato kind of deal. But um, it's just not, it's really not so heavy. You know, that there was a great, great way to start off as, a, as an appetizer. Okay. So, um, again, it's a different approach you know, than what I had seen at uh, La Uza's. I don't think it's a fair comparison to really compare them head to head, but like, I'm just mm-hmm. saying that this is a different approach, right? A different execution. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, this one definitely um, uh, was uh, was enjoyable uh, for that. So the next that followed after that is the main course. And there were definitely a number of dishes I was trying to go back and forth on. But ultimately, we I went with uh, this dish. This is the pan roasted pork chop uh, with cheese grits, yeah, and a uh, and an andouille pan gravy. So, you know, this pork chop again, beyond it was uh, it was really great. Again, this is from a fine dining chef. You know, well high executed. Um, everything that was just served was just on point. I feel. Um, this pork chop was almost like a steak, you know, it's like, it's so easy oh. to cut through. It's, it's got great color. It's just not, it's yeah. It was like a great, um, kind of, in, you know, let me see if this is better. Yeah. I mean, you get a decent pick here, like of the cut, you know, of the pork mm-hmm. chop. Um, obviously soon she red, right. You don't want to see red in your pork, but this was a mm-hmm. great color and it was so easy to cut through and easy to chew and, and eat. Um, it, it was, um, it was, it's very good. Um, and the, the grits, you know, at first I was looking at, I thought, cause actually the previous menu I'd seen included uh, mashed potatoes. So I thought it was potatoes, but then mm. I realized I looked at the menu. Oh, it's actually grits. Nice. And so, um, these cheese grits, you know, um, were actually quite, um, smooth cause grits can have that textural, you know, quality to them, kind of a gritty texture. And sometimes it can be pretty bland, but, um, you know, the, the cheese that was in there was, was not too strong. It's like a mild cheese. And I'm certainly, I'm sure there's a good amount of butter in there. Um, but, uh, it definitely had a good amount of flavor from that. Um, so the grits, you know, it was a great, uh, it was a great, I guess, use of it you know instead of uh like mashed potato for example not that that would have been bad but like this was a nice take on putting this including this with this dish um and then vegetables because you know decoration well yeah and and then uh the pan sauce which is uh the andouille sausage which is a smoked pork sausage so in addition to the pork right you have this pork sausage on there and it's made as a pan sauce um you know and and the company there with the, uh, you know, with the with the pork chop, very savory, you know, great smoky flavor. Um, it yeah, that was just great. You know, it's like comfort food, but like just executed like with high high class. I think. Um, okay. Yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, certainly that was good. And then from there, um, we had the dessert, and the dessert was a pecan pie. And I don't think anyone's going to argue about having a nice pecan pie because, um, you know, it's a nice comfort food as well. A nice dessert that I don't think anyone can go can go wrong with. So mm-hmm. um, the pecan pie, I always fear that I'm going to cut the roof of my mouth because, oh. <laughs> right, because the pieces are just always too large or, you know, it's always like caught, you know, it's cooked with the uh, the corn syrup or whatever, makes it super sticky and tacky. Um, but certainly this is not, you know, it, the, the pecans are, are chopped pretty finely, you know, so you still get some oh, okay. texture in there. It's not, um, you know, it's not overly done. So, and, uh, um, 
you can see here on the plate of uh, the pool of uh, caramel sauce and the caramel uh -huh. is uh I don't remember if let me see I don't want to say that the caramel had liquor in it but I almost but definitely there was I almost felt like there was almost a something that just cut through it, it when it wasn't like overly sweet you know like you know, mm. wasn't all sugar, all butter. Maybe it was, but um, there's just a great amount. And I feel, you know, as I feel like you reach adulthood or you're really getting in there when you when you find good desserts and you say they're not too sweet, that's like your standard now. I don't know. Oh, that's uh. so sad. <laughs> but I think kind of really entering that uh, that phase. But the caramel sauce, like you could easily eat, you know, eat that yourself, like on its own. Like it's oh, okay. like not, it's not like a thick you know, sauce that like slowly. Oh, yeah. With, but it's it's kind of a nice, play, almost playful kind of, you know, just kind of easily falls off the spoon, just like easy to pour. Um, and but I think it was just a little odd. I just say that the crust was a little off. You can see here there it was a little broken. I don't know if that was mm -hmm. intentional or in the preparation. It just I was expecting like right the full edge of the mm -hmm. crust to be present. <laughs> But uh, that's fine. I actually have no qualms about that because I, I was really lost in the just the flavor of the whole pie. And then topped with some um, whipped cream and a little mint on there. So the mm -hmm. the, the whipped cream certainly uh, was nice, refreshing, you know, uh, lightness uh, with everything going on. So, again, it's it's great. It has a great sweetness. It's but again, in the adult times, it's not too sweet, which is actually great these days um but uh yeah but overall like from the appetizer to the main to the dessert it's like everything was just um really well done i will go back a little bit to the uh, the barbecue shrimp to say that mm -hmm. along with that there was some bread service so they gave you a piece of bread and that bread uh was definitely more definitely like the parkway po'boy bread that french bread you know oh, okay kind yeah. of super crispy on the outside, firm on the outside and soft on the inside, mm -hmm. but not too crummy. It doesn't like, it doesn't shed crumbs all over the place. You just kind of just tear it off and you're good to go. And you just kind of sop up the, uh, the sauce and everything. Sauce. Yeah. yeah it, it's really satisfying. And it came with a little bit of like whipped butter as well. So you just kind of layer all that stuff together. Uh, very enjoyable. So it makes, uh, finishing the, uh, the barbecue, a little easier and actually you can save some as well uh to help with uh some of the sauce from the the pork chop as well so oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. actually I, I will say i, I wanted to kind of uh, shout out the the staff that that had served me from the front of house and also um my uh, uh server um and uh the what was it? The yeah, as I was having the barbecue shrimp, the um, the front of house lady. I want to say her name is Sandra. Okay, I don't quite remember, mm -hmm. but we'll say Sandra. If I find out otherwise, okay. I'll let you know. But she um, she just approached me and said uh, she just kind of kindly um, or almost playfully mentioned, make sure to finish your sauce, you know, something like that. And I said, yeah, that's no problem. <laughs> it's not hard to do. Uh, it's really, it's really excellent, really delicious. And so it wouldn't be hard to do. And so she had kind of responded by saying, yeah, uh, only because, you know, there are people who come by and um, I have to remind them to do it because not everyone does, does quite the same. And I said, yep, there's no problem here. I'll, I'll take care of that for you. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I cleaned that plate, you know, both, you know, both <laughs> that the shrimp and the and the pork uh dishes um and at the end of the uh the end of the meal um she she compliments me it's like it's like man you were a really stellar diner <laughs> <laughs> it's like the first time anyone's like really complimented me on for eating. Do, of, on eating usually okay. it's usually it's you know accompanied by like fear and you horror yeah. yeah yeah some disgust, <laughs> disgust <you know>? yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so maybe this is one of the few times where i'm rewarded for my gluttony right and this is why you're going back there <laughs> this is definitely the why reason. this is definitely the reason why 
And then my server, uh, who interesting name is, uh, is Jamie. Um, oh, okay. she, yeah, she's just, uh, she's just very nice, very, um, uh, engaging and, and very patient to, you know, explain, you know, the menu and things like that. And, oh, nice. um, yeah, so I, uh, uh, I was it just, again, makes you feel really, uh, welcome, you know, in that space. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, to what you said, like, I certainly will want to go back. And, um, I will say that I was fortunate to actually find myself there because I think this is one of those restaurants that you do need to make reservations for well in advance. Um, mm. Like, you know, in weeks, maybe months, depending on what's yeah. going on. Okay. But I called two days before. So oh, hey, you, got days. <laughs> you got anything? <laughs> and, uh, and you know, they, they managed to find me this spot um, uh, on this day. And, and so I, I said, yeah, I'll take it. But I will say between then and even up to the point before I had headed out, I was really trying to consider, should I really go? Because, you know, I wasn't sure. It, there was like a number of things. I think, like, for example, I wasn't sure if uh, if I would have enough room. Let's put it that way. Right. Oh, okay. having, yeah. having eaten so much already prior or what I had planned, would I have enough to really appreciate the food is, you know, from there. Fair, yeah. And then also to an extent, like having read that it was like kind of fine dining or like a fancier mm -hmm. spot, you know, I wasn't sure if I would be out of place, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, you would be regardless. Hence the, <laughs> yeah, saying, it doesn't matter. Where matter. You go. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Dumb and hungry wherever I go. Um, <laughs> so I, it sounds I, like they made you quite welcome though. They, they certainly did. And, um, whether they, uh, is out of obligation or maybe they lost a bet. I don't know, but most likely pity. Yeah. Solo yeah. diner. Come on. <laughs> exactly. But it, it was definitely, it was, uh, it was enjoyable. I mean, I had a great time even as a solo Fine. diner and I think if I have the chance, uh, you know, us or, you know, some of our other friends here, we can visit there. It, it, um, man. I, I would, it would yeah. be a great time. It'd be a great time. Yeah. Hear that, um, Tomo? <laughs> a little dining. It was more enjoyable, probably, because they were nicer to him. It can, yeah, it can definitely be enjoyed uh, as a solo trip. Yeah, so that was, um, again, Brixton's, you know, um, out there. Yeah, so let's just kind of go through, again, like, where we've been so far, we've been to Cafe du Monde. We've had some uh, excellent beignets out there. That's the standard, I think, of what uh, you should expect beignets to be, along with the Cafe au lait. Um, mm. You also have Eat Well, which is a convenience store. So um, you can buy fish sauce and yakamane. So uh, <laughs> that's fine. Um, and Boudin as well. You get an interesting take on... Um, on, on what Boudin is, um, Parkway Tavern for, uh, for the quintessential po' boy. And, uh, that was great too. Uh, this random lemonade stand, which I will eventually find more info on, um, sure, uh, sure. uh, Liuzas by the tracks, uh, for a different take on po' boy, as well as their take on a barbecue sauce, a new Orleans barbecue sauce. Uh, followed by Brixton's, which is, uh, you know, kind of a, yeah, comfort food with um, high dining, fine, fine dining um, execution. So um, all these places um, I really enjoyed. I, I, I would definitely uh, go back to all these places, just have a chance to try something else from there or try a little bit more of the same. Um, so it's all in one day. Yeah, this is uh, all in one day, and nice. I was considering whether or not I should hit the uh, French Quarter at night um, because you know that's where everyone goes. I, I, as I'm looking at this, right, all the places we talked about, like mm -hmm. only Cafe Du Monde at this point was in the French Quarter, like proper. Oh. <laughs> Everything right, no. else is like not <laughs> there, and so most people are probably going to ask. Or just look at this and like, what is wrong with you? I, it's like oh, you are fine. you're just doing this all all wrong, all <laughs> all different. But um, yeah, that's um, that's part one. 
of, uh, of many of the, the different places we've hit up at NOLA. Um, and there's still, oh man, more to come, but I am so excited. I don't know about you, but I right. am hungry again. I'm always hungry now. Yeah. And it's all your fault. Every time we do these. <laughs> well, it's a good thing you had something to snack on. Um, no, it was not enough. <laughs> I'm going to eat all of my Thrifty's ice cream after yeah, we're Eat done all here. your ice cream, eat all your snacks, you know, and, um, I'm sure I'm sure we'll have a lot more to talk about but for now we've come to the end of another episode thank you for joining us <laughs> we're excited to bring you more of our food adventures with good food and good people reach out here on Instagram I'm at dumb and hungry he's at my underscore chow why don't you email us at hi at dumb you can leave us your feedback and your love letters uh, you can find the videos here on YouTube uh, won't you like and subscribe and smash uh, but you can also find us here on spotify apple podcasts and wherever else fine podcasts are served but until next time i'm angelo and i'm my show and on your next food adventure remember to try one of each Let's give the people a little bit of an after show here. I just, in addition to like all the uh, food places that we have and will be covering, um, you know, I kind of wanted to highlight some of the non food things. Um, waste of time. I, well, that's why it's in the after show. It's an afterthought. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but um, this is more of just like the traveling in general, I think. Um, kind of the, <laughs> the planning on, you know, getting there. So I wanted to talk, you know, kind of talk about this, where I stayed. Um, that was at a hotel at, uh, called the Lafayette. Um, interesting choice of a hotel considering that I've lived at the Lafayette for most of my, <laughs> of my upbringing. And so to, I don't know, it seems like I've taken a turn here. I'm not quite sure. That's the, is that the street that it was on that you're no it's hospital? it's just oh. oh yeah where I grew up yeah yeah yeah, yeah Lafayette <laughs> oh I don't know man I just remember turn at the orange building all right oh that makes sense too yes yes oh, okay um but uh, the Lafayette is a hotel in uh, in New Orleans it's it's not in the French Quarter it's about a mile away in the downtown business district. There are different districts uh, throughout there. There's business, there's warehouse, there's garden district, uh, and so many others. But yeah, this particular one was out there in, um, let me see. I'm sure I have it here. I s did I save it? I'm sure I did. So uh, there is the Lafayette. And it's a nice, charming, you know, kind of place. It's, um, it's kind of, it's got that old school oh, kind of nice. classic you know kind of charm in there yeah. uh, it was a decent stay to be honest this is an example of like one of the rooms look like um okay, yeah. yeah you know got a king size bed you know got a nice desk here uh the closet would probably be behind where this this picture is taken um and here's an example of like one of the restrooms decent i think mine was uh just like a curtain kind of tub oh, okay. uh restroom um, but yeah, that was, uh, that was quite nice. So, I mean, the hotel, I think, I don't know, it's just like four, it's like four or five floors or something like that. It's not terribly big. And mm -hmm. then here's, uh, like the front desk. So I arrived like super late, right? Like midnight or something. And, uh, got dropped off and, you know, there was like, you have any key card access after like 10 o'clock. Um, mm -hmm. and the person was like not there, uh, uh -oh. right away. So I had to like, I, I had to wait, but thankfully there was like someone, uh, there's like a couple that was coming back from whatever they were doing, like from dinner or whatever. And thankfully they, they got in and then I just followed them inside. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm telling you like, um, just in general, again, this, the, the weather in New Orleans is like tropical weather. Um, mm -hmm. so hot, humid, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, nothing that maybe I'm not used to because, you know, uh, the Philippines and, you know, things like that. It's similar weather, similar kind of uh, quality, I think. 
but mm. um, it didn't help obviously that we were greeted with three digit you know temperatures <laughs> so it was uh, at kinda, midnight well probably midnight was probably what I think mid high 80s yeah Oof. which is okay but again yeah. like but you That's know again you know you're in a humid environment because like when I stepped out the airport my glasses fogged up immediately oh. <laughs> yeah okay yeah yeah but um so the Lafayette, it got that charming look. I think I, I definitely like to stay there. I, I'm sure there are many places in the quarter that I think people would recommend you stay. Actually, there's someone I was talking to on the plane, um, and they stayed at a place called the Olivier, I think. Um, I, I don't know if that's how it's pronounced, but it's called Olivier, Olivier House. Um, and it's Probably in the, Olivier, but okay. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> But it's in the quarter, and uh, you know it's it's definitely got that nice charm as well. Um, but if you whatever you choose, I mean, like it depends on how far you're it's willing to go. But certainly, like hotels in the quarter are going to be a little bit more expensive, you know, mm-hmm. um, than uh, you know, like for myself, staying a little bit outside the quarter. I would say just. Throwing out some very general numbers, I think just having a quick, I was taking a quick look at like comparing what the rates are at the, mm-hmm. at Olivier house versus where I stayed. My, my room was probably like close to half uh, less oh, than well. what this was. Not that. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to stay like two or three nights, maybe it's worth it. Right. Um, mm-hmm. If you want to stay in the quarter, have that nice experience in there. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, staying after the quarter and just taking a mile maybe a mile walk to the quarter is totally doable not not crazy at all um and additionally it's along this uh saint charles streetcar so i had mentioned earlier that i took the streetcar from the hotel to brixton's and we talked about uh the streetcars earlier but the saint charles streetcar in particular is the oldest running um line you know um there i don't know if it's for new orleans you know or just the oldest running streetcar ever i'm not quite sure now but it is old actually it's been designated as a uh, historical landmark so and it's super classic you'll actually know the saint charles streetcar because those streetcars are colored green um all the other streetcars that the one that you saw earlier and like all the other ones that i would ride would be color red Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, uh, definitely a different, different take. Here's a example of the street car. Yeah. This is the St. Charles street car. So it's green. Yeah. And, um, it was nice, like on my way to Brixton's, you know, um, it just kind of passes through a lot of different neighborhoods, including the garden district, which, um, I would like to have explored a little more and maybe next time I will, but the garden district is like one of the nicer neighborhoods, um, very beautiful houses, construction, architecture, a very pleasant, uh, you know, kind of scenery and ambiance. Um, but, uh, but anyway, the St. Charles streetcar goes through that neighborhood. So it was nice to kind of, um, see those mm-hmm. places even from afar. Um, mm-hmm. but, um, getting around with public transportation is actually quite quite good i mean uh like i said you can uh, fares are super cheap it's like a dollar 25 you know for for a fare um but you can buy day passes day passes mm-hmm. are three dollars uh this three day pass that i got is eight dollars there's a 15 wow. day pass for 15 and there's also a month pass as well um and you can purchase it in the app um so they have a an official uh, app that you can download and uh, purchase from there. And then whenever you board your, um, you know, whatever ride you're taking, you can just present uh, your the app with the with the ticket on there and they'll know that, it, you know, you've got the pass on there. Um, and it's as easy as that. Like you could buy your pass uh, at, you know, they have the machines for the, you know, to take the fare. But yeah, that's uh, really about it. Um, but it's, if you get the paper ticket, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. It, it could be they. You could definitely mm-hmm. do that. But uh, just one more thing, I have to worry about, right? Like I have to keep taking it. I have to get out my. I don't know. Like I feel like. I guess, yeah. 
So either way, like I know, cause I think with the paper, then I still have to insert it into the machine, wait for mm -hmm. it and take it with the, with the app. But like, I just show it to the operator you and then tap. you're oh, good. You, you don't, it. you don't tap. Yeah. You just show it and, <laughs> and they just nice. believe you. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's not a screenshot. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> but as far as, um, public, so these, these transport options are operated by RTA. So, uh, that's their, their, that's their version of the MTA. And mm -hmm. so that includes the buses, the streetcars, and the ferry. Um, okay. And that three-day pass is good for all of them? Yep. Even the ferry? Wow. Oh, yeah. It's great. Cool. Um, the ferry. Uh, so they're a so, sale. Okay. So, of course, like one of the attractions that people, you know, recommend you, you try is like take a steamboat, right? You can take mm -hmm. the steamboat that goes yeah. along the Mississippi River, right? Um, yeah. but I mean, like there's a, there's the factors like time, right? Like I don't, I don't have much time. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not necessarily an experience that I would choose to do over like eating for a streetcar. Oh, <laughs> and the streetcar. Yes, exactly. Uh, I really enjoy the streetcar. I'll tell you that right now. But, um, uh, so the, uh, kind of the, oh. alter maybe the alternative or the cheap solution is you take the ferry. <laughs> <laughs> that way I could still say I crossed the Mississippi river, uh, in a boat. Um, so what it is, the, the ferry is, um, it takes you across from, um, you know, the French quarter, that terminal there. Um, and then it takes you across the river to a neighborhood called the Algiers neighborhood, which is one of the older neighborhoods in New Orleans. And if I had more time, I would also have wanted to, uh, explore that neighborhood as well. Um, but, uh, so it can take you there. The ride is like, it's like no more than five minutes and the okay. boat leaves every half hour or something like that. Uh, so you board and then again, you just show them your, your ticket and then you're on your way. Um, and then, um, yeah. And then, and then you, if you could just do that as many times as you want, right? There's no stopping. I like, mean, that's what they the three day pass. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let me just show you like a little bit, like here's like the inside, right? Like I'm just sitting at one of these and you, you know, mm -hmm. this is like the inside of the boat. I'm looking forward of the boat. Um, and this is like an example of like the boat, right? The RTA, uh, ferry. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean like that's, if you had to pay, it's a dollar 25 to ride the, to ride the ferry and you can still say you cross the river. So yeah, there's like, yeah. You know, it's a great, uh, I'd say it's a great alternative. Maybe not as scenic, admittedly, but it's a nice way to get across, again, to the Algiers neighborhood. And then that way you can see the other side. You can see, you know, the opposite side of the river go towards the French Quarter. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's just a nice a nice way um, to see another view of, of that part of the city. So, um, yeah, that was uh, getting around with public transport. I took one Uber because um, I visited... Uh, an area called Frenchman Street, the quarter, um, that's more east, the east part of the French Quarter. It's a small strip, uh, a few blocks of like all sorts of music clubs and things. Um, oh, okay. uh, there's definitely music like wherever you go on Bourbon Street or whatever, like nice. some party. But like Frenchman Street is really focused on like performative music, like, you know, music that you listen to. And oh, as opposed okay. to like a sing along Just type of feel, oh, okay. you know, so, um, anyway, but it was, you know, I, I finished up there quite late. So I took an Uber back to the hotel. Um, but that was it otherwise. And then I, what I, I will talk about maybe another time, but I had rented a car, uh, to visit a plantation and, um, you know, just that morning and then that's it. And then otherwise I was relying on public transport and, uh, things like that. So mm, now nice. as far as getting to and from the airport, if you're in the French quarter or like in that area or nearby, like downtown or whatever, um, in my case, I arrived late. So my options were kind of limited. I would have taken the bus if I had, but obviously it's super late. So they're not there. So the taxis there, um, charge you a flat rate, just like flat rate, flat rate from if you're just coming from the airport and going anywhere within the quarter or nearby, um, there's a certain like cutoff point, I think a certain toll cutoff point, mm -hmm. like, but that's pretty far off, like pretty far from where the quarter is. So 
it's $36 cool. um, for single rider. And then if you have like three or more people, then it just cuts down to like 15 a person. So like if you have that many people, it might be worth it, like taking the taxi. Because they have ride share too. But mm-hmm. um, the ride share, at least, you know, for a single rider, at least, you know, like for taking my case was a little more expensive. Be like at least $40 plus. Oh, so here okay. it's just 36 flat. And then, you know, if you want to include tip, I guess, right? Um but yeah, that's a great, I think a good option to consider. There are other, a few other options you could, you could consider, um, you know, during normal hours or whatever. Uh, but I think this was a good thing to know. Um, so when you get off the airport, there's like a taxi booth, there's a booth for the taxi and you can stand in line and you can, t- uh, tell there will be people out there either in the booth or outside kind of asking, where are you going? And you tell them, and then they give you a, a little piece of paper to, um, to and tell you like which taxi to go into or whatever and then they Mm -hmm. will take you to your destination um so yeah it's uh it was pretty like pretty easy i'd say um yeah and then getting around like i said is uh if you're gonna stay in the quarter yeah don't rent a car i mean like don't bother because especially if you're gonna just stay in the french quarter you know you should just walk throughout Mm -hmm. Um, or again, just a few times if you need to take public transport, because the streets in the quarter are like super narrow. Like you could, you could just fit like one, they're all one way streets basically, you know? So you have one side that barely has parking for cars. Um, and all those parking spots are usually taken. And then anywhere you would want to park for common areas, even though there are plenty available, they're expensive, you know, like day Mm -hmm. rates and stuff. It's, it's a lot. So uh, unless you have a particular need, um, you know, it's probably not worth it. And then even like at the hotels, they'll do valet. There's like no, they may not necessarily have like dedicated parking. Um, and they'll do valet mostly. And those are like 30 plus dollars, you know, per night to mm-hmm. store your car. So unless you have a real need to get out of the city, then, um, yeah, just, just, consider other other modes but um Mm -hmm. yeah i think we'll kind of go over some of the other non-food things um but uh this was just kind of a overview of like some things to consider while you're staying you know um in there um but yeah that was uh there's there's plenty more to come i uh i'm really excited and i hope you are too and I'm going to find some food to eat. At, yeah. <laughs> as usual. As usual. And we'll and we'll talk more about that as far as actually bringing some food back home to enjoy. So Oh, uh, okay, nice. So more to come. 